Hello everybody, today we're going full nerd, man. So I'm really excited today to show you something. You may say, oh, so what, Bob? It's a plain toe blucher. I've seen a million of these before, but yeah, I bet you haven't seen this recently. This shoe is a Sears Roebuck and Company shoe, and here's the special part. This shoe is at a minimum of 35 years old, and look at this. It is in absolutely box new condition, right? With the metal V cleat in it. So I'm gonna talk about uh, this shoe, a little bit I researched about Sears um, and how I know the age of this shoe, okay? So let's go. Everybody's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. They're both done, doesn't it look awesome? So uh, first of all, I found this lovely pair of shoes, okay, um, thrifting. And I was really stunned to see these things. Um, Sears, to be quite frank with you, before I found these shoes, I didn't even really know that Sears, you know, themselves actually made shoes. And well, upon first examination of this shoe, um, the leather, although it is, it does say inside of it, let me show you here, where does it say that? Uh, here, right on the label. If you can read that, it says genuine leather, right? Uh, upper and outsoles. So, you know, this would be the insole. Now, it's interesting if you look at the insole, if you can see there, it says genuine leather insole. Um, and the leather itself, genuine leather, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'll link below, doesn't really mean it's the highest grade, okay? All genuine leather means is that it actually does come from, in you know, this case, usually be a cow or calf, um, but that doesn't mean it's a high grade of leather. It just means it's not fake. So when I look at this, it does, even though it's got a texture on it, in my opinion, this is not fact. My opinion, it looks like corrected grain leather to me. Um, in other words, I think what they do is they're taking a you know, so, so a decent grade of leather and then imprinting, you know, this pattern into it. Um, I don't see like the hair follicles or things like that. That would, you know, be the higher grade of leather would be like full grain leather. Okay. Um, but if you look at it, you see, it is 360 degree Goodyear welted. The ad says so. This is a storm weld. You see how that lip is folded up? That's designed to help prevent water from getting in. This is a double oak sole. If you can tell, if you really look, let me get a little more lighting on it. If you can see the edge of the sole, I don't know if you can tell. You can see the welt is the first layer there. And you can kind of tell there's a second layer, which is a midsole, and then the outsole. So it's a you know double thickness compared to a normal shoe. You can tell it's obviously much, much thicker. This style of shoe that's very common to have a storm welt and a double oak sole. Um, so this would be a very rugged, sturdy shoe for walking around in. Look at the stitch density on that, that stitching there as well, right? You know, how many stitches per inch they are. Uh, it's very impressive, as well as how close to the edge of the sole it is. Now look at this. It looks like a real stacked leather construction heel, the old fashioned, the good way. The notch there on the on the inside is so that it doesn't catch on your pant cuff. And if you see there, it's got 27 brass nails around the perimeter. That is called a V-cleat. The V-cleat in the 70s, uh, 60s, I don't know when they started doing that, but 1960s, 70s, and into the 80s was very common. Um, a great website actually you could visit is uh, vcleat.com. A guy named David runs this website. Um, unbelievable, amazing information on there if you love the, you know, the old fashioned, the vintage shoes and stuff. Um, but what Floorsheim did is the uh, Floorsheim shoe company did this, and I'm sure they were in competition with Floorsheim, um, is up until I believe 1973, the V cleat, this V, was flush against the edge of the shoe. Now, the reason it was there was to help prevent wear, because if you see, this is on the inside of the shoe. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's on the outside of the shoe, right where you would walk, where the heel would contact the ground. Um, I've never walked on V-cleat heels, but uh, they also call them suicide heels. I guess when the pavement gets wet, these can be pretty slippery. So in 1974, what um, Florsheim did was they moved like this, they moved the V-cleat inboard a little bit, okay? So that's not Sears' construction. Now, how old are these shoes? That's the very first thing I wanted to know, okay? Look at these laces, it's got flat laces, and if you can see, I don't know if you can tell the quality of them, but they're pretty high quality laces. You, I know you can't tell from the, just the video, um, but they're nice, finely woven. They're definitely waxed. They have a really nice, rich feel to them. Okay, a blucher is a kind of derby. A derby is an open lacing system. The blucher here where you have, you see the, um, in essence, the um, uh, eye stays here on a thin strip 
you know, on the outside of the shoe. I don't know all the technical details, but I know this is what differentiates a blucher, okay? If this quarter, you know, came all the way down like this, then I don't think that's a blucher. So, plain toe meaning no cap toe or anything like that, right? So, believe it or not, this thing still smells new. Now, let me show you some of the catalogs. So, here's some of the catalogs, and I'm going to start with the spring 1979. Um, by the way, the, the place I found these catalogs um, is Ancestry.com, uh, which I already had a membership to. I had to, I had to reactivate it, though. So, just so you guys know, it uh, cost me 20 bucks to reactivate my membership. So, my research uh, budget here on this particular pair of shoes was actually more expensive than acquiring the shoes, okay? Um, but uh, the catalogs, they have every Sears Roebuck catalog going back to, like, I don't know, 1896 or something like that. Um, I just started in the mid-60s, and, you know, I was able to narrow it down to between, uh, you know, 1979 to 1984. Um, and I believe 1979 was the first year this model number showed up. So let me show you the, oops, let me show you the model number. If you can see inside the shoe there, you see it definitely says, um, you know, it says style, oh, I'm sorry, size, and obviously 12D, okay? I'm not sure what that number under it there is. And that number says 370. I'll try to get it to focus. I don't know what that is. Um, style then, 74668, 74668 is the model number um, and then you can see over see over here it says com combination i'm guessing combination last so that's probably number five last last is the shape of the shoe and then the other number below there might be production run and year so i don't know it says in little letters there it's very hard to see here i'm trying to get the lighting correct um and it says uh i don't know if it's 80 or 08 okay right down here it depends which way you turn it because it's sideways. So that can be 08 or 80, okay? So 370 may be a date code, 08 may be a date code, there may be a date code in that number. I don't know, okay? Um, but what I do see is on the inside, this is important here for dating. Can you see this puffy part on the arch? It's hard to get it lit just right. There we go. You see there? It says comfort arch and it's definitely a padding there, okay? So between the V-cleat, the model number, um, and the comfort arch. So let's just start with the spring 1979 catalog. By the way, like the 1984 catalog is like uh, 1,525 pages, okay? It's, it's like, it's crazy. Uh, but generally they go like the women's clothes uh, um, and sh uh, kids' clothes, then they go to shoes, women's shoes, then the kids' shoes, then the men's shoes, okay? If anybody's nuts enough to go look that up yourself. So here it is, and you can see uh, model number, there it is, 74668F, black, $39.99. Isn't that crazy? So if I look at the description, the leather sole and heel, metal, cleel, metal cleat on heel, which this one has, leather in sole, steel shank for firm arch support, Goodyear welt construction, does not say anything about the comfort arch. Now that doesn't definitively mean it's not a 1979, but statistically speaking, you know, this is more likely to be a later year, you know, newer, just statistically speaking. So keep that price in mind, $39.99, 1979. If I go to 1980 catalog, and I found it here in the 1980 catalog, okay? There it is, style number one, right? So 1980 catalog, upper soft supple leather uppers, da-da-da. Metal cleat on heel, so metal cleat on heel, leather insole, um, and this is 1980. Still, by the way, it went up in t uh, price, 10 bucks to $49.99, still does not say anything about that comfort arch, and there is the model number, 74668. So 79 was the first year I saw, uh, was able to find this model number in all the shoe sections. So remember, that went from $39.99 to $49.99. Now here is the spring 1981 catalog, catalog number 262A, and there it is. Okay, now metal cleat. Now, do you see that for the first time? It says cushioned at arch to add comfort. That's the first time that shows up is spring 1990, 1981. And again, there's that same model number, 74668. 55 bucks. Um, you know, some people today don't want to spend $55. And this was 1981 prices. So it went up in price $5. Uh, and then from there, 81, 82, 83, and 84, you did see the same model number. Um, and if I'm going to just jump ahead to spring 1984, by 1984, it still says cushioned at arch. It still says a metal heel with cleat. Um, but if we look here, 
Okay, the price has jumped to $69.99. It jumped uh, from 1983, the price was $64.99. Okay, so it kind of just kind of went up every year. 19, uh, let me go back. 1981 was $54.99. 1982 was $59.99. 1983 was $64.99. $64 and here in 1984, it went up to $69.99. That's, that's quite a bit of money. Uh, black grain leather, you see the same model number. So, assuming that the earlier models did not have that arch support, that narrows this shoe down to between 1981 to 1984, right? And I'm going to guess more likely it's 1982, 1983. 1985, this model, I could not find this model number in the catalogs at all. I'm guessing they just priced themselves out. Now, here's something interesting. Here's my little matrix to figure all this stuff out. So, I went on a website and looked at what would be the you know, equivalent price if you take into account the cost of inflation. Just as a general rule of thumb, you know, inflation being three to four percent, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Uh, they had really high inflation though during this time, but generally speaking, things double in cost about every 20, 25 years or so. But I punched in the, the numbers that $39.99 shoe, the equivalent price today would be 140 bucks. The $69.99 would be 171, but you say, oh, that's only a $30 increase or 22% increase. But this is the weird thing. If you were going to buy a shoe for 40 bucks and it was 70, that's a 75% increase in cost, right? So I think that's part of the reason that quite selling is it just got too doggone expensive. I mean, it's almost doubled in cost in a period of a few years, okay? So um, anyway, um, so what does that mean? Uh, well, I guess that means the newest the shoe could possibly be is made in 1984, which means the newest it could possibly be is 35 years. Is that nuts? Absolutely unworn. Like I said, they haven't even been fully laced yet. They really, to me, look like they were just taken out of the box. And look at that. I think I've now officially purchased, and they do fit me. They're a 12D. But I think I have officially just purchased my first pair of shoes that um, I'm actually never going to wear. I think I'm going to put these up on the shelf, maybe make a little stand for them or something, and just display these things, right? This is something else that I kind of learned. When I was looking through the Sears catalogs, I mean, pages and pages, they have work boots and they have shoes and, you know, um, I mean, clothes and pants and toys and tools. I mean, really, Sears was like, you know, the Walmart, you know, of the day plus. I mean, really, they really had everything. And I was kind of thinking about it. Those Sears catalogs, the 1984 catalog, by the, by the way, the 83 catalog had Cheryl Teagues on the cover. I was like, woo woo, right? You know, so right now, I guess, you know, probably the the the, the Gen, uh, Gen Xers, my generation, are like Cheryl Teagues, woo woo, right? Uh, where the millennials are like, who the crap is that? You know, T-I-E-G-S, look her up. But anyway, um, so uh, the thing that I got from that is that the Sears Roebuck catalog was really kind of like the internet of the day. Today you surf, you get lost on things, you know, things like that. Um, I think that was in the day, uh, you know, kind of the internet. That's what you did is you flip through the Sears catalog and, you know, looked for toys and tools and all kinds of good stuff. But um, I'll put a few more shots of these things in here before I wrap this up. So as I wrap this up here, I guess one of the lessons I learned from this was just kind of reconnecting with what things used to be like. It kind of gave me a sense of nostalgia. And really, I think what this captures and embodies is, a, you know, the piece of Americana pre-internet age. And even though I lived through that in a lot of ways, um, I've really forgotten that, what it was like to look through those catalogs. And another part of it was that this was a fairly expensive shoe for the era. Um, they had a lot of other cheap shoes and they came out with uh, artificial materials like core fam you know that uh, you know just didn't really do the job and I think this was one of the things where they were advertising this as one of the uh, you know better constructed shoes and you know obviously we're charging money for it um, so um, I just thought that these shoes would be great to hang on to they really I don't think have a lot of monetary value uh, you know Sears is not a collectible brand so I'm just gonna hang on to these for some nostalgia's sake and uh, thank you so much for watching I hope you got some benefit out of this. God bless you guys. Everybody take care.